Welcome to the intro to Form 101, part of a five-segment series that explains the fundamentals of good running form. Middle school is the age when running transitions from being all about play. Now is the time to begin focusing on training, albeit a fun version of training, and introducing competition to those who are interested. Focusing on form is essential at this age because as your kids undergo the major physical changes of puberty, they'll need to learn to control what are essentially their new bodies. Improving your athlete's running technique will help them in four key ways. They'll run with greater ease and efficiency. They'll be less prone to injury. They'll become more aware of their body mechanics. And ultimately, they'll improve their endurance while getting stronger and faster. These benefits will help your runners enjoy running and reach their fullest potential. Let's first consider six important principles to guide your coaching and the technique training you design for your team. Then, take a look at our four other Form 101 segments for specific elements of good form. First of all, running is a technical sport and high performance running is a learned skill, not an innate ability. As with any sport, good technique needs to be taught and continually practiced. Secondly, the best way to teach form is by regularly practicing specialized exercises and drills. It's not enough simply to point out how your runners should improve their form. In fact, relying on your instructions alone can lead to injury. On the other hand, drills help your team break good form down into more manageable elements and concepts. In time, these components become well-practiced skills. They become habits that athletes perform easily and can automatically incorporate into the complete running stride. Form drills like these also isolate and exaggerate the movements of the running stride in order to build the strength, power, and efficient neuromuscular reactions needed for each component of running. This enables the body to sustain good form over longer periods of time. For example, the high knees exercise exaggerates the knee lift in running to develop the muscular strength and quick action that make good knee lift sustainable. You'll find this and other exercises in the form section of a running start. The third principle is to evaluate the level of your athletes when designing your form training. Consider their strength, their mental maturity, their skill, and their motivation to work on their form. While most of your training will focus on the basics, your kids are mentally and physically ready to be introduced to some of the finer aspects of form as well. Since middle schoolers are curious and eager to be treated like adults, now is a good time to start explaining, at least broadly, the importance and logic behind good form and form training. But don't get too bogged down in the details. Your first responsibility is to keep the running experience fun for your kids. Keep in mind that since each of your athletes is different, the training and coaching you give them should vary accordingly. You may be working with both beginners and more experienced runners. Some of them will be competitive and motivated to train, while others will simply be running for fun and fitness. Recognize your runners' differences and find the right balance between challenging them and pushing them past what is enjoyable. The fourth and a related principle is to always account for each of your runners' anatomical structure or body build. Remember that there are a variety of physical or structural differences among runners that could cause flaws in their form, flaws that drills and exercises may not completely correct. An example is runners with flat feet who may have trouble running on the balls of the feet. So avoid pushing runners to do movements that are uncomfortable. And if you become aware of runners with structural problems, consider seeking assistance from a sports doctor. Also, consider the effect that puberty has on the physical builds of your runners. Most of them will be going through rapid, awkward, and potentially destabilizing physical changes. For example, the hips of middle school girls widen during puberty, which can affect alignment and cause uneven stresses on the leg joints. There are some exercises that will strengthen runners while working around the effects of puberty. 
but most importantly, be mindful of the potentially vast differences in growth and maturation rates among team members. Due to their rapidly changing bodies, some movements may feel awkward at first. That's okay. As you continue working on form through exercises such as these, the movements will become less awkward. Just be careful not to ask your athletes to move in ways that feel uncomfortable, as that can frustrate them and can also lead to injuries. As you work to correct detrimental running form, remember to do it gradually, working within each athlete's limits. Principle number five is that while there's no single perfect form for running, there are techniques that are safer and more efficient than others and that ultimately lead to better performance. In our subsequent Form 101 segments, we present general form concepts, but keep in mind that ideal form will vary with different situations, such as sprinting versus distance running and hill running versus flat running. And the sixth and final principle is to remember that as important as good form is, your primary goal as a coach should be to keep running fun. After all, happy runners are the ones who keep running. We've grouped the elements of good running form into four categories. Fundamental athletic skills, running posture, leg movements, and arm movements. Each of these categories has its own dedicated video segment that demonstrates widely accepted aspects of good form. To get started, choose the segment you'd like to play first. Then check out the activity segments in A Running Start for ways to teach those form elements. Enjoy and good luck!